Have you ever spotted a wild boar in Singapore? Well, encountering one may be less surprising in the years to come. That's because a recent study has found the animals popping up and establishing their presence in most of the livable green spaces in Singapore. The report, which involved researchers from more than 10 organisations, including the National University of Singapore, found a rapid spread and increase of wild boars in the last 20 years. It also found that the population will likely continue to grow. And Park Zhou says the density of wild boars has remained consistent and even dipped between 2019 and 2020, from 6.57 per square kilometre to 5.22. Dr Adrian Liu, its Group Director for Wildlife Management, tells us more about what the organisation is doing to control the animal's population in Singapore. And this is uh, actually, uh, in a way, um, partly due to, you know, um, one of our strategies in managing the wild boar populations. So this will be reduction of the oil palm plantations. So this reduces the food um, that is uh, extra for the wild boars. And this actually helps to reduce the densities. Another thing that we do is really enforce against feeders as well. So this also uh, reduces the density. And uh, we do enforce against feeders because this can be quite a big source of food for them as well. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a combination of habitat modification as well as enforcement against feeding. Dr. Matthew Laskin, who heads the Ecological Cascades Lab in the School of Biological Sciences in the University of Queensland and co-author of the study, joins us now. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Laskin. So, what is the impact of an overpopulation of wild boars? With an increase in population, I assume that would mean increased possibility of contact between humans and the animals? Yes, our new paper with NParks describes how wild boars were completely eliminated from Singapore and then recolonized and have been expanding over the last 20 years. However, right now, we do not consider them overpopulated, but we're monitoring their populations closely. Most interactions with pigs are actually beneficial, such as when a hiker can spot a wild boar and feels a connection to nature. Pigs are rarely aggressive. However, sometimes they are involved in vehicle collisions. So how do we then balance between the need for wildlife preservation, like you said, you know, the ple pleasurable experience of a hiker versus the safety of the human population? Wildlife and humans already coexist peacefully in Singapore, much more than other areas. This is largely due to the lack of large, dangerous animals in Singapore. For example, we don't have tigers remaining. And there's also a ban on hunting in Singapore. So you don't get a lot of conflict between these animals and people. But to ensure interactions with large wildlife, especially wild boar, remain beneficial, the most important thing is to give them space if you see them and also avoid feeding. A lot of people have a um, want to do something good by feeding wildlife, but this is actually really negative. It creates bad habits. It creates um, wildlife becoming uh, habituated to humans, being near them and potentially having a negative interaction. So the most important thing is to avoid feeding wildlife. So you're also working on a study on the African swine fever and mentioned that it could keep the wild boar numbers here under control, but could also decimate their population. What is the threat of the African swine fever? Are there any possibilities of transmission to humans? Right. Well, let me start by saying the disease causes no threat to humans at all. It's strictly a pig disease. That being said, it is very deadly for pigs. So African swine fever has already decimated populations of wild pigs in Southeast Asia since 2021. In some places, in some places, this really threatens conservation or even extinction for the other 10 endemic pig species in the region. Its delayed arrival in Singapore is really surprising, but now that it's here and people have detected African swine fever in pig carcasses on the island, we think the outcomes will likely be similar to other nearby forests. For example, in my last trip to a large forest in peninsular Malaysia, I had seen that the, the pigs had killed over 90, sorry, the disease killed over 90% of the pigs within two months. Now, this is not cause for too much concern because populations of wildlife fluctuate naturally anyway, and pigs have the ability to reproduce very quickly and so may re rebound in the future. But for the next few months, we're going to be monitoring this situation very closely. Thank you for your very interesting insight. This has been Dr. Matthew Luskin, University of Queensland.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos.